How are you doing, Rock Church? This is Pastor Josiah here with my beautiful and lovely wife. Hi. Deanne. <laughs> uh, we wanted to get on here and we're going to kind of have a discussion about discipling your children and discipling our children. Um, often a question that we ask is, you know, what's the best way to disciple children? And what constantly comes to conversation is that we cannot do an adequate job of discipling your kids on a Sunday morning. It takes more than just that. What, what we talk about a lot is how do we educate the parents to better disciple their children? Because really, that's what the Word of God teaches us to do, Yeah, is to raise your children in how they should go, right? Yep. So when we sit down, if you don't know, my wife leads our children's ministry. We're like, okay, well, this, this brings up some questions, right? Like, how do we do this? What's most important? And I first want to start off before we get into this, and then my wife will talk more, but we want to train and teach and equip and disciple your kids as believers because we believe that your children are in the covenant of God. Um, all throughout the Old Testament, children were not excluded from the covenant with Abraham. They were not excluded from the covenant with Moses. Children were very much a part of the kingdom of God. And you'll notice something different in our church, that our kids actually will come up and they'll take the sacrament. They will take communion because we believe they are in the covenant of God. Yeah. Now, if that's the case, there's something supernatural, right? There's something formative about a kid in a worship service. Yeah. And this is parents immediately are kind of like, whoa, whoa, I really like my time, whatever. <laughs> but we feel like we're missing something by not allowing your children to be in the community with other believers, worshiping yeah. God as a family. Yeah. Yeah. And even in the word, it talks about like Paul even is instructing children, like honor your father and mother. And it's not, all right, parents, go pick up your kids from kids church and tell them what I'm telling you. No, he was talking to kids in the, in the moment, in those times of, um, when he was giving a word to the, to the church. Yeah. In first Corinthians, he says, you know, yep. parents honor your father and mother. You know, that is a commandment to children, not just to adults, right? Like he's yep. teaching them as well. They are part. Yeah. So, yeah, so a change, if you haven't picked up on it so far, that we are going to make is the first and fourth Sunday yeah. of every month. We are going to have, what are we calling it? Family worship. Family worship. Mm -hmm. So we are going to have your children be in the service with you. Now, what ages are we talking? Um, so we're going to leave that kind of up to you or not. Um, we are going to still have nursery and preschool um, every first and fourth, like every Sunday. Um, but on the first and the fourth, Kids Rock uh, will be in service with mom and dad. We encourage that you have your family sit together. That doesn't mean that you can't have families sit by each other. Um, but we do want to make this a time where you guys can worship um, together corporately. Um, I do encourage you that if some of you feel like maybe your older preschoolers or even if you're infants, if you want to try it, can sit through the service, do so. Do what's comfortable for you. But the first and the fourth Sunday, the uh, kids rock age first through fifth grade will be in service. Um, and then the second and the third Sundays, we will have our normal um, kids rock where we're continuing with catechisms. All right. So we know what you're thinking. You guys have some common objections that you're going to say. Yep. Right? What are some of these objections people are going to have? Uh, my kids aren't getting anything, aren't getting fed, my don't understand it. My kids aren't getting fed or don't understand the message. What would you say about that? Um, I would say that you have a low uh, idea of what your kids can um, obtain. You do not think that they're smart enough. They are. <laughs> they can. They will understand and pick up on more than you will even realize. Yeah, I don't think we can expect our kids to understand everything that I'm going to preach or dad or whoever's going to preach yeah. from the pulpit. But I can tell you as a kid raised in church, I've hardly missed a Sunday my whole life. You know what I remember about children's church? I remember games. Mm -hmm. You know what I really remember spiritually about my church experience was being in the corporate gathering with my parents, yeah. the times of worship, listening to the pastor, catching up on little things about following Jesus, about reading his word, those little things, you don't realize your kids are not that dumb. Yeah. They I, will pick up on little things. Yeah, I think even reinforcing small things like, hey, look at Elder Keith, or hey, did you hear what Pastor Josiah said? Or, 
Did you hear what um, Pastor Dan was sharing? Any anything like that where you can engage with them and get them to to shift their focus back to what's going on? Yeah, yeah. So that's the first objection. What other objections are we going to hear? Um, the other objection would be I'm not getting anything out of this, or I'm distracted, yeah. um, or I feel like my kids are being a distraction. Oh, I have a lot of thoughts on this one. Yeah. What are your answers? Um, they're not a distraction. Uh, it will seem well, unusual. They are a distraction. Yeah, but it's not something that um, that we're going to be like, hey, you need to get this under control. Yeah. I think that you're going to have to use your own wisdom. You might have to get up and walk around or walk to the back or um, maybe step into the nursing mother's room if it if need be where we will have um, the service live stream. Um but it's going to be in, uh, getting in a rhythm. Yeah. And I think that, number one, your primary source, right? Like you should not look at your Sunday sermon as the only time you're feeding on God. Yeah. It is a very important time. Yeah. But also there's something beautiful about the whole covenant family of God coming together, being in one house, being in one worship place. I want to hear kids crying. I want to hear kids squirming. It's something beautiful about a picture of heaven. And listen, it's going to affect me from the stage. Yeah. I'm going to have like kid, some kids going to be messing around over here and I have to try to somehow ignore it, right? It's going to be a little bit of a change for everybody. Yeah. But it's something that we feel is really important for the formation of your children. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, um, remembering that um, our Sunday mornings is not a time for where us, we come to consume. So I think that's also a great way to um, train our children is that coming on Sunday morning isn't the time for me to consume the word of God and to be fed for the week. Like Josiah was saying, it it should be where we're coming together as a body and worshiping Jesus together um, as a family. Yeah, there's a reason that we have, that's a great point, on that point. So there's a reason we have liturgy in our services, that we have a call to worship where we read together, where we worship, right? Where we do confession before we take the Lord's Supper. Like these are things that we do and your children will do. Right? Worship is not a time to just come and receive. Worship is a time to come and sacrifice and to give. Yeah. So your children get to get up and give and participate and worship. And that is a beautiful thing. So don't narrow down the service to just the portion of sitting and listening to the word. That is a very important part, but don't narrow it down to that. It's way more than that. Yeah. I think too, um, maybe we should touch on how this will affect just your at-home worship also. Yeah. So Great. So on this, this whole thing is this is a big theme that we're working on right now and incorporating family worship, which I'll eventually preach on this in more depth, but family worship. We want worshiping families that worship more than just coming on Sunday mornings, yeah. that actually worship as a family in the home, mm -hmm. that read the word together, that pray together, that worship through music together, that do that. Now, if you do that through the week and then your kids come to church on Sunday morning, it's going to feel a whole lot more natural. Yeah than if you are completely negligent of God throughout the week as a family and then show up on Sunday. Yeah. And I think too that it will um, it will be easier to have that be done at home too because you're setting the tone. Um, you're kind of breaking that awkwardness of maybe like dads, if you're standing next to your son or your daughter and you've got your Bible out and you know, you're following along during the service, they're watching you do that, and then that kind of makes it a little easier for you to open up that Bible, dust it off, and, you know, maybe do it Monday through Friday at home. My favorite joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, first and fourth Sunday will be family worship where all the kids yeah. will come together. Okay, and then the other two are going to be what? The second and the third? Yeah, uh, catechism Sundays, um, our normal kids rock. Uh, and like I was saying... There might be some kids who can handle before first grade. Um, use your discretion there. Kind of decide as a family what works for you. Um, we've seen this modeled a lot of different ways. There are some families that just hop right in and say, you know, we're committing baby infants. They're out of the womb. They're in pews with us. Um, yeah. But we're, we want to start small. We know that this is going to be a big change. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, last thing I'll say. So, as the pastor of this church, this is not something that we're doing because we want to have an easier job on Sunday mornings. No. We care a lot about discipling your children. I don't want to, 15 years from now, lose your kids to the world. Yeah. Um, I want discipleship to mean something. And I know that having them participate in the corporate worship, there's something supernatural in the corporate worship, is important. And it means something. And it sticks with them. And they will crave that.
for their whole lives. I cannot imagine not being in corporate worship on Sundays. It's part of who I am. It's part of who you are as covenant people of God. And it's part of who your children are. So this is not us trying to get an easier job. This is us taking your kids' discipleship more seriously. It's historical. It's biblical. And it's what we, we think is right for the church. So. Yeah. yeah. Totally agree. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to comment on the video or reach out to me or the elders, and we will talk more. Yeah. Otherwise, we will see you and your children at church on Sunday. Yes, family worship this Sunday. Love you, church. Bye-bye.